in our last lecture we looked at the codal provisions on the bolt capacity calculation based on this indian code is 800 2007 we looked at some formula relating to the capacity calculation of bolt for bearing shearing and tension so based on what we learnt in our last class today we will discuss a numerical example on calculation of bolt capacity and we will be discussing an example for two conditions simultaneously this is the single shear joint that we have been discussing till now and this is the double shear joint in both of these joints single shear and double shear we can see that the plates are being clamped by a bolt and then the plates are applied with some value of force in the horizontal direction so since we can see that these forces that are being applied on the plate either in the single shear case or the double shear case these are being transferred by the bolts in the form of bearing stresses and shearing stresses but there are no tensile stresses as of now so for now we will see how to calculate the bolt capacity based on bearing and shearing so let's start so on the right hand side of a screen you can see that i have listed out the formula that we discussed in our last chapter so that we don't have to look at it again in our code and we can use the formula right from here So first let's start with the single shear joint and let us calculate the bolt capacity for bearing. So if you look at our formula the design bolt capacity for bearing is given by the nominal bolt capacity for bearing divided by the partial safety factor. Okay this is not bearing let us first start with shear capacity. This first formula is for shear capacity and this second formula is for bearing capacity so the shear capacity of a bolt is obtained by dividing the nominal shear capacity of bolt divided by the partial safety factor and the nominal shear capacity is determined by this formula here so what is the nominal shear capacity or let us directly write the design shear capacity of bolt is given as f u over root 3 let us say that currently we are using 8.8 grade bolts so that the ultimate stress of the bolt is 800 newton per millimeter square and the yield stress is 640 newton per millimeter square so f u by root over 3 gives you 800 by the root over 3 into Now in our last class we discussed that if it is the case of a single shear joint we will assume that the shear plane lies in the threaded portion to get conservative results so the number of planes in the shank region or in the non threaded portion will be 0 whereas the number of planes in the threaded portion will be 1 since there is only one shear plane here so you can write 0 plus now number of shear planes in the threaded portion will be 1 into the area of the diameter sorry the area of the bolt in the threaded portion will be given as as we discussed in our last class it will be 0.78 times the area of one bolt so let us say that we are using 16 mm dia bolts here or this will be represented as en sorry not en the bolt will be represented as m16 bolts So the area of 116 mm bolt is almost 201 mm square. So 0.78 into 201. This is the nominal shear capacity, and we divide it by material safety factor, which we obtain as 1.25 from IS code to get the design shear capacity of bolt. So let us perform this calculation and see how much value we get.
so the value you get to be something like this 57930 newtons and to convert it into kilonewton just divide by 1000 this comes out to be 57.93 kilonewton so this is the shear capacity of our bolt for a single shear joint 57.93 kilonewton now let's perform the same calculation for this double shear joint as well so what will be the shear capacity of bolt in this case of double shear joint the formula will be the same so it will be 800 divided by root 3 now in this case we will consider since there are two shear planes we will consider one shear plane to be in the non-threaded portion that is in the sank of the bolt and another shear plane to be in the threaded portion so one shear plane in the non-threaded portion 1 into area of sank will be given by the area of bolt of diameter 16 mm again which will be 201 plus one shear plane will be in the threaded portion and the area of the threaded portion will be given by 0 0.78 into 201 then divide it by 1.25 perform the calculation let's see how much we get So we get this to be nearly equal to 132201 Newton that means it will be 132.201 kilo Newton. So this is the shearing capacity of the bolt for this double shear joint. Now you can see obviously the shearing capacity for a bolt in double shear is greater than the shearing capacity of a bolt in single shear. Now let us find the capacity of the bolt based on bearing of the bolt. So we will start with the single shear joint based on bearing. Okay. Now the design capacity of bolt based on bearing is given by this formula here. So what are these values here? KB, KB will be the minimum of these values here. D is the nominal diameter of the bolt which we are using is 16 mm. So T what we call this T, this T was the thickness of or this T was the summation of thickness of the plates having stresses in the same direction. But in our case we are only have two plates in the first case here, one 6 mm plate which is bearing the stresses in these directions in the left hand side and the second plate of 8 mm thickness on which the force is acting on this right hand side so we have to take the minimum of thickness between these two plates since there are no two plates which are having the stresses in the same direction there are two plates only and each plate is having stress in the opposite direction so between this 6 mm and 8 mm we will take the minimum value this comes out to be a 6 mm and this fu we discussed last time fu will be the minimum of the ultimate stress either for the bolt or for the plate now we have assumed here 8.8 .8 grade bolts for which the ultimate stress is 800 newton per millimeter square let us assume that our plates have ultimate stress of 490 newton per millimeter square and for such type of plate the yield stress will be almost 350 newton per millimeter square if you want to look about the capacity or the grade of these plates you can go to table 1 of IS800 you can see there the value of these yield stresses and the ultimate stresses so the plate grade we are using is has a ultimate stress of 490 newton per millimeter square whereas our bolts have 800 newton per millimeter square so we will take the minimum value for this FU here and that comes out to be 490 newton per millimeter square now to find kv we have to find the minimum of four terms here one is e by 3d naught another is p by 3d naught minus 0 
another is f u v over f u and another will be 1 so this e is the what we discussed e the value of e will be okay let me write here the value of e will be 1.5 times the diameter of the hole this e represented the pitch distance so the minimum value of e will be 1.5 times the hole diameter so our bolt has a diameter of 16 mm so the hole diameter will be 16 plus 2 mm that is 18 mm so 1.5 into 18 we get i think we get a value of 27 mm 1.5 into 18 okay it's 27 mm so since this is the minimum value of e let us adopt the value of e is 30 mm this d naught represents the whole diameter and this p value we know the minimum value of p let us take now for now is 50 mm so now let us calculate these terms e by 3 d naught will be 30 over 3 into 18 so 30 over 3 into 18 you get this value to be 0 0.55 now p over 3d naught minus 0 0.25 you get this is 50 over 3 into 18 minus 0 0.25 50 over 3 into 18 minus 0 0.25 you get this to be almost 0 0.68 so fub over fu means the ultimate stress of bolt which is 800 over ultimate stress of plate which is 490 this comes out to be 1.63 and finally we have a value of 1 at the end so just remember the difference about the representation of this fu here the fu in the formula that is this fu here this represents the minimum value of ultimate stress of between bolt and plate but while determining the value of kb this fu means the ultimate stress of plate and this fub means the ultimate stress of bolt so let's see here what is the minimum value among these four we can see that the minimum value is 0 0.55 so we adopt this value and finally we determine the design capacity of bolt based on bearing is 2.5 into kv means 0 0.55 into d d we have adopted 16 mm t we got 6 mm and fu we got 490 mm sorry 490 newton per millimeter square and we have to divide it by 1.25 to get the design bearing capacity let's see how much we get so this we get the value to be 51,744 Newton that means almost 51.74 kilonewton so this is the design bearing capacity of bolt for a single shear case now let's do the same for our second case also the value of D will be the same 16 mm now the value of T will be what will be the, the value of T so to find the value of t now we can see that this first plate which has a thickness of 6 mm and the third plate which has a thickness of 8 mm these as the stresses in the same direction that is towards this left hand side and another remaining plate the middle plate the second plate has a, which has a thickness of 10 mm has a stress in the opposite direction so the value of t will be the minimum value between first we have to add the thicknesses of plates having stresses in the same direction that is 6 and 8 and the remaining plate has a thickness of 10 mm so the value of t will be minimum value between summation of 6 plus 8 and 10 so 6 plus 8 is 14 and this is 10 so we take the value of t to be 10 mm so the difference is only the 
determination of this 10 mm or this T value here. The value of F U will be the same 490 Newton per millimeter square. Now see if any there is any difference in the determination of KB. Our E and D naught will not be changed. F U B and F U will be the same. So the value of KB will again be the same as in the first case that will be 0 0.55. And finally, after determining all the factors, the design bearing capacity of bolt will be 2.5 into 0 0.55 into 16. Now for this T instead of 6, we write 10 into 490 divided by 1.25. So if you perform this calculation, you will get the value to be 86,240 newtons that will means 86.24 kilonewton now again you can see that the bearing capacity of the bolt in the double sear is greater than the bearing capacity of bolt in the single sear as we got for the shearing capacity okay i have written it incorrectly here this is not bearing this is searing so this is searing now if you compare the searing both the shearing and bearing capacity of our bolt is greater for the double shear case now if we look for individual case which is the critical factor let us see that now we can see if we compare the shearing capacity of the bolt and the bearing capacity of the bolt for this single shear joint, we can see that the shearing capacity of the bolt is greater than the bearing capacity of the bolt. Hence, the critical action is bearing for our single shear case. Because if the bearing stresses or the bearing forces exceed this 51.74 kN, the bolt is already failing. It does not have to reach this 57.93 kN for the bolt to fail in shearing. It is already failing in bearing, hence the critical action is bearing here. And again, for the double shear case also, the critical action again here is the bearing. So the lesser of the two capacities determines the critical action. Here we can see that the bearing capacity is lesser for both single shear case and double shear case. Hence the critical action is bearing for both cases. In this way you can find the capacity of a bolt subjected to any type of forces. Here we only had bearing and shearing stresses. So we calculated the capacity of the bolt in these two cases, single shear joint and double shear joint by calculating the bearing and shearing capacities only. Similarly, we can do for the tension forces also if we find that tension forces are acting on our bolts. So this will be the end of our lecture and in our upcoming lecture we will look at an excel sheet that is used for this bolt capacity calculation and then we will go on to another type of connector which is the weld. We will be discussing some codal provisions about welding from our IS code and then we will look at the calculation of weld capacity. So this will be the end of our today's lecture. Thank you.